Hey fellas, Mate Trapper here. And this is the last episode of Connor Bear School, and this is going to be mainly a lecture. And this video is on safety. These traps are dangerous. They're not only dangerous to the animal being trapped, of course, but they're dangerous to the person setting the trap as well. Um, I've been trapping seriously for over 15 years, and I avoided serious injury until two years ago. I had a Bilal 220 uh, go off uh, and catch me on my finger. And I'll spare you the details, uh, but I had lost my setting rope earlier in the day. Uh, I normally carry it in a, in a chest pack with all of my tools so that it's right here. And I had left the pouch open. When I bent over, my rope fell out. I didn't notice it. And I was about a mile from the truck. And it took me 45 minutes to get back to the tru truck, uh, cut a rope, off of my kayak which was loaded in the truck and release myself. Um, to this day I have a dent in my finger where that trap caught me and stayed on me that long. It took almost a year for me to regain full use of my finger and full feeling. Six months after that trap hit me my finger was still numb. Uh, that's a sobering experience and I don't want it to happen to you or anybody else. So the main thing is, if you're going to fool with uh, cona bears, make sure you can release yourself if you're caught. And that comprises two things. That's not only getting yourself out of the trap, which I'm going to show you how to do in just a second, but also make sure that however you have your trap anchored, if you've got it wired or cabled off to a tree, that you can get the trap free from the tree with one hand. And you've got to be able to do it with either hand because you never know which hand is going to get caught. So you have to be able to do a self-release with either your right hand or your left hand, and you have to be able to free your trap from its anchor with either your right hand or your left hand. A lot of my videos, you'll see I'm using these spring clips. Uh, that's because they're very easy to clip and to unclip, and I can do it with one hand. If I've got wire, and I've got that wire wrapped around multiple times, and I've got a trap on my hand, and I'm trying to unwrap it uh, with one hand, and it's swiveled, that can be a chore. So let's take a look at how to release yourself from a trap if you're ever unlucky enough to be caught. The first thing you're going to need is a good piece of rope. A nice, thick, smooth piece of rope. The next thing you're going to have to be able to do is to tie a bowling knot. That's what I use. Uh, and the bowling knot is uh, to make a loop to put your foot in. Now here's a very important point know how to make a knot, the bowling knot. Know how to make it. Know how to make it with either hand, with one hand. It's pretty simple to tie a bowling knot with two hands under good conditions, but if you're caught and you're in an emergency situation like I was, where I had to hike out of the woods back to my truck, I had to be able to retrieve my knife with one hand. I had to be able to open my knife with one hand, cut the rope with one hand, and then tie the bowling knot in the rope with one hand to make a loop to put my foot in. So in other words, I had to not only be able to release myself from the trap with one hand, I had to be able to make my release rope on the spot with one hand. And like I say, make sure you can do all of this right-handed and left-handed. Now this sounds like a lot of overkill, but until you've been in one of those situations, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Just trust me. I hope you're never in it because it does hurt. Um, if you're in frigid water, freezing water, deep water, it can be a pretty serious situation real quick. One skill that is a prerequisite is knowing how to set, how to safely set a body grip trap. Now you can buy uh, tongs, and I do use uh, setter tongs. They're very handy, very convenient. Um, but everybody that's going to be using a conibear needs to know how to set it with a piece of rope. Not only is setting uh, your trap with a piece of rope convenient, it's the only way to perform a self-rescue if you're caught. Because if you think about it, if you have one hand caught in this trap, there are two springs. You've got to have two hands to operate a set of tongs to squeeze that together. But you only have one because you're caught. So you've got to be able to release yourself from a trap. And the only way that I know to do that is with a piece of rope. And so I always carry two pre-made rope setters with me, one in my clothes and one in my pack. Okay, your setting rope is going to have a loop tied on one end. That's just a bowling knot, and all that does 
is that allows you to put your foot through it, which gives you a way to stabilize the setter. Now the next thing that you do is you take the free end of the rope and you pass it through one of the spring eyes, and then you pass it up through the other spring eye, like that. Pull the rope down and repeat the process. Pass it through the first spring eye, then up through the second spring eye, pull it tight, and now you can see when I pull this rope, it's going to pull the spring eyes together and I can apply my safety. So I'm going to get a good grip on the rope, and I'm going to pull it up, you can see I've got the springs together, and I'm going to put that safety on there. You can see why having a good safety that stays put is a convenience. When you're out there slipping around in the mud and the ice and you're tired, having a safety that's flopping around and won't stay put is a real aggravation. Now you can see if I were caught in this trap, I would only have one hand and I could not pull the rope and manipulate the safety with one hand. So what I would have to do is once I have those springs tight, I would have to hold the rope with my teeth and then use my hand to engage the safety. Not easy, not fun. Be careful, use your safeties. So what's the bottom line for body grip traps or counter bear traps? For me, I don't use them a lot. To me, being a beaver trapper, the traps that I'm gonna be using are the 330s, the big ones. They're heavy. Uh, you carry a dozen 330s, that's hard to carry in on your back, and then when you're carrying out your dozen 330s plus four or five beavers, that's quite a load. It's quite a load in a small boat. Uh, when you compare the weight of a 330 to the weight of a snare, there's no comparison. Uh, another thing about kind of bears is they're lethal traps. Any non-target catch that you make in a kind of bear trap is going to be dead. Uh, there's no releasing an animal from a con bear. If somebody's dog sticks their head in it, um, something else happens, whatever's in there is going to be dead. Um, so keep that in mind. There are laws uh, that are increasingly restrictive on con bear traps, so you have to keep those in mind as well. Uh, there are pluses to con bears, and some of the same things that are negatives are also pluses, in that it kills the catch. So if you are trapping in an area where you don't want an animal thrashing around, making a huge burn circle, um, a lot of guys up north that are uh, big coon trappers that drive down the road in, in very remote rural areas, they can see a coon trail off the side of the road. They get out, they put a con bear trap there, and when they make a catch, the animal is stone cold dead. It's not jumping around, attracting a lot of attention, so that when somebody else drives by, they see their animal and go steal it. Uh, so the, the very thing that can make it a negative to one person can make it a positive to another person. So ultimately, it's up to you. Well, fellas, I hope this has been useful, and I really appreciate you watching. I'm going to do a few videos uh, coming up on foothold traps, and then hopefully by that time, trapping season will be here, and it'll be time to get out in the woods for real. But thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.